Greetings, this is Kevin Jefferson, the cash flow creator and follow the Forex fam and follow my trades.com. Here with Trade Theory for uh, what's today? Today is Thursday, um, Thursday, October 20th, and it is 4 58 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is actually analyze uh, different um, sectors of the market. I'm going to you know, start with Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then talk about the indexes and then wrap it up uh, talking about oil. So, uh, let me go ahead and share my screen so we can. Uh, see what's going on here. So this is the Bitcoin chart and uh, this is the weekly chart right here. So let me go down to the daily and kind of give a little bit of context. So the market is consolidated in this range for a long time and uh, tried to push higher. I do see that um, Bitcoin will probably have aspirations of getting up to the 28302 area uh, at some point, but definitely not anytime in, in the near near future. So what I see happening with Bitcoin is uh, prices down here right now. I expect it to make at least one more push lower um, maybe even down as far as a uh, 16, what, 16, 855, 1655, 44, something like that. And it could potentially make one more move higher into the 21, 117, 45 area. But that would be a complete fake out if it did just kind of get more suckers involved and get more people buying. Um, but definitely see um, Bitcoin pushing lower one more time and then uh, really having aspirations to get down as low as uh, 10,112 uh, and 19 cents a coin. So 10,112, 19 a coin is what I'm eyeing right there. So we still have another uh, 9,000 uh, value to lose for Bitcoin. Uh, so now looking at Ethereum, because a lot of people thought that um, the stake or whatever was happening with this, I don't know what they call a merger or something. Um, I don't really follow crypto like that. Uh, was going to really drive the market higher. And that was around in this area. And then I told people that price would uh, make these these false moves and then come back down here and look to hit the 11, 94, 24 area, something like that. So yeah, and, and it happened. So price spike down there, pull back up. Uh, look at, at the lower time frames. Um, price is not, um, it it could potentially try to make one more push higher, maybe up into this area to the uh, 1389 um, area and then continue to fall. Um, because the EMAs are a little bit more spread out. So there may be some still some orders to get up this in the higher uh, upper areas here. So could see price moving up one more time, but definitely would be um, a move that would be a false move ultimately and getting you um, faked out where it's really wanting to go low. So as I look at this um, chart right here, this is really telling me, yeah, it may, it may make one more push here, create a wick, um, create some price, price action, and then look to target uh, the nine, what's that? 996.23, that area right here. And uh, with a full on target of about six, was that 656.32? So right into this area right here. So definitely looking for Ethereum to drop uh, in the coming weeks as well. Uh, and then we're going to switch over to the Dow. This is the Dow 30, which mirrors the Dow Jones Industrial Index. And so price is officially in an uptrend. It's actually in the, uh, pulling back off of uh, a level, what I call a level too long. And so I could see potentially price hitting as high as 31,079.40. And I really couldn't see it going much farther than there. Um, you know, definitely like, you know, not seeing it getting as high as um, the 32,200 range, but maybe one more push higher. And that would be a fake out in my mind as well. And then um, I would expect price to, to uh, move back lower. So looking here, kind of got this last pull push up into this area and then expect price to completely give out uh, and then start to move lower. Uh, and then where, where it goes, when it goes lower, I'm about to go to the monthly charts because it look less scary um 22,901.30 and 22,001 was that uh 125.30 so uh, looking for price to get down as low as here um and that's you know that would be um significant um from the standpoint that um that might be something that's in the coming months and then you know maybe the justification will be in will be a recession um that everybody's been talking about and being geared up for um for price to get back down there um, so, so we're looking at, you know, price getting down as low as the, uh, the, the low twenties, um, low twenties, upper 23,000 area at some point. And then the S and P 500 is, uh, pushed higher. You see these purple lines. I've mentioned those, I placed those there some weeks back, said those were pullback points. Price hadn't really pushed and closed higher than that, um, in recent weeks. Um, so this is officially off of a downtrend. So when price closes down here at the 36, 68, um, area, um, could see uh, the S&P go ahead and moving lower um, down to 34, 22, 35, and then possibly the 29, 09, 11 to this area uh, in the coming months, uh, weeks and months as well. So um, everything's poised to fall. Um, and then let's look at NASDAQ. This is probably going to move faster than all of them because it's tech oriented. So it's hit the pullback points, those purple pullback um, lines that I created a while back. 
Um, it's hit those taking out orders on that side and it's actually technically pulling back off of an uptrend. So maybe it could push to try to get as high as 11, 867, 25. That would be kind of the last stand. Um, and, and maybe it was only get down to 11, 700. That's about six or 700 more points in the upside. But that would all be a fake out, guys, um, with the expectation price. I already hit my one target of 10,746.41. And then I'm looking forward to hit um, as low as 78.3609. And so, you know, the recession will come in perfect time to justify those uh, those moves in price. Uh, now, this is Brick, Brick Crude. Um, I, I mentioned this the other week um, on, a, on a video and said it was looking to get up to $100.81 a barrel. It has not hit that point. Now, it's technically off of an uptrend right now. Um, so it could it could magically get up here, but I doubt that that will happen. Looking at the weekly, it, had, it didn't close higher, as I mentioned. I said it needs to get up in this area right where that orange ribbon is, 181. It did not do that. It's kind of consolidating here. And so um, not that it wouldn't make that push. Anything's possible. That would be a fake out, in my opinion. And then price, I'm looking forward to fall down to as low as uh, 81,442 on its way down to $75.51 um, for Brent crude in the coming weeks and months. And then uh, actually double TI crude is technically off of an uptrend as well on the daily and on the weekly, um, but not really making much uh, noise there. And so I'm seeing I in a downward movement uh, down to the 75.08 um, range and then ultimately down to the 62.14, so $62.14 and maybe $59.51 on the low side, maybe not staying there, but touching that area in the coming months. And that would all coincide with this conversation about inflation, which would be awesome. Uh, gold has just completely quit. Um, it has actually tried to make pushes higher and it's got three more pushes um, that it's made to the downside actually off of this um, uptrend on the daily and it's officially still in an uptrend. So price could maybe make one more move higher, um, spike up here to the, the 1672.24 area, but definitely looking uh, as it's looking on the weekly, it's already showing that it's weaker. It has not closed lower on the weekly, even though it's in a downtrend. Um, so uh, would expect price to maybe make one more move higher possibly, and then uh, move down to as low as 1448.37 um, before um, stalling out um, and kind of figuring this way. So definitely looking for gold to continue to fall specifically as it relates to the dollar. And uh, everything is lining up to completely go down in the coming weeks. So we'll just kind of keep an eye on that and uh, see what the markets do. Anything's possible. They may make one, one more move. I see, you know, six or 700 more points to the upside possibly before the market complete uh, starting to drop and, uh, and freak everybody out. So um, we've got that. You can check this out on the YouTube channel on uh, the Forex family and get, you know, get this recap anytime. And, uh, you know, I just want to tell you, you know, the reason I do this is to give you information and analysis and kind of make you uh, aware of what is to come and what, you know, what could the possibilities be. So if you want to make any decisions as it relates to anything that you own, um, but specifically my my premise is to help business owners and entrepreneurs and really help them navigate cash flow. A lot of them have portfolios. A lot of them are looking for ways to um, shed the frustrations of running their business without, um, you know, adding employees or overhead, but, you know, maybe doubling their cash flow or increasing their cash flow. And so that's what we do. Help you cut those frustrations, double your cash flow without adding employees or overhead to your business so that you can actually get more flexibility with your time and schedule, uh, which is really what you want as an owner and an entrepreneur. Um, you want to do cool things, but ultimately you want to have the time flexibility, which is the, you know, the ultimate reason that we do what we do as entrepreneurs. So um, check us out at fmtrades.com uh, and uh, learn more about us. Check out the cash flow case study where I talk about the seven streams of income and why most people never get there. And until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, as I always say, happy trading.